I'm here with Ms. Rachil Raza, President of the Council for Muslims Facing Tomorrow. Ms. Rachil, you oppose radical Islam. You speak about it. You're very outspoken about it. Why do you believe, what drives young men and women to encounter and to partake in terrorism? Well, if you want the short answer, it is about an ideology. It's about the hijacking of Islam and turning it into a political ideology and brainwashing young people into absorbing that ideology. I mean, we're talking a lot, very often, about young men and women. Yes. How do they find their way into such a dis destructive, destructive behavior? Well, they don't necessarily always find the way. There are people who manipulate them. There are mercenaries out there who are promoting this ideology of hate, which essentially is not about the spiritual message of Islam, but is a politicized, violent version. And these young people, if they have issues, if they are uh, worried about what's happening in the Muslim world, you know, they see what's happening, say, in the Arab Spring, they have causes, and then they get sucked into this ideology, and they are somehow told that this is part of the faith. So a lack of knowledge about the tenets of the faith, a lack of knowledge about the spiritual message of the faith, and then being turned into a political ideology, it's a really combustible combination. And you know, young people are angry, young people are passionate, they're emotional, so they get easily hooked into this ideology. Now does it say anywhere in the Quran, in, in the Islamic religion, that one must partake in terrorism in order to achieve their goals? Not in my understanding of the Qur'an, but as you may understand, like other scriptures, the Qur'an is open to interpretation and different kinds of understandings. And when religious leaders take verses out of context and interpret them in a violent way and interpret them in a way that suits their purposes to promote the ideology, then these young people believe that. But the direct answer is no. The Qur'an does not say kill anyone. The Qur'an does not say promote violence. The Qur'an says humanity is one community and have compassion with each other and you know talk to each other and and have understanding with each other especially those people who are people of the book which is the monotheists which is uh, Jews and Christians so it is misinterpretation of the faith which is presented to these young people as being palatable as being acceptable and they then believe or start believing over a period of time when they are brainwashed with the same idea again and again they start believing that this is the faith now, Israel has faced many, many terrorist attacks, unfortunately, and is continuously facing terrorism threats. Are they on their own, or is radical Islam something that is against the West in general? Well, there is certainly one aspect of fanaticism and radical Islam that is against what they believe to be Western values and Western ideology, and that is something that is embedded into the mandate of the Muslim Brotherhood as we read. They use that as an excuse. So Israel does face a lot of terrorist attacks, but it's not the only country that does. There is a lot of terrorism within the Muslim world itself. There is violence between Muslims of one sect and others. And we see this happening in the Muslim world if you look around. And that is the saddest part of terrorism, that it has no boundaries, it has no borders. It just sees everyone else who is different as the other. And they have no qualms about killing their own people if they disagree with them. Which leads me to what's going on in Syria currently. What do you think about the chaos and the civil war that's taking place there? Why is it still going on? It's begun a long time ago and it's still ongoing. What can be done? Well, it's absolutely heartrending. I heard a statistic today that said that more than 93,000 people have died. And it is unacceptable in this day and age that the rest of the world sit back and allows this to happen. But you know, there are a lot of concerns. Should the West intervene? Should the West not intervene? And I think that these are political decisions that have to be made by leaders. But certainly, we can't let the Syrian cause just go undefended. We can't let innocent Syrians die, men, women, and children. And then the aftermath of such uh, issues, it's not just what is happening with the violence and the killings, it's what's happening to the women. Uh, and, and I'm an activist for women's rights, so it breaks my heart when I hear of young women being sold because they can't afford to feed the families, when I hear of rape being used as a weapon of war. And, you know, this is up front and center at the United Nations. I am accredited there. I do go there. But uh, there needs to be more action. While people are talking about what is the right thing to do and what is not, there are people being killed every single day. And I think that is unacceptable. What can the West be doing to change this? 
to go against radical Islam? You know, that is a difficult question because I am not a leader, but I certainly think that they should be able to find some way to stop the violence. Um, you know, it's not enough to just support dictators. There has to be ways of bringing in balance. And that is the most important thing that, you know, Western leaders should sit and talk about what they can do. I mean, they do in every other situation. So why can't they do take some action on Syria? Ms. Raza, thank you very much. Okay.